Good morning. Ever since I, uh, long ago as a child, realized that my dreams were actually created by myself and not something horrible that was a chance or um, unpredictable coordination of um, daily memories and ideas that my head made, but I was actually the um, manuscript, I did the manuscript, I, I was the director and the producer. So our dreams are actually our own things we do towards ourselves. I remember reading in a book about, um, and this is not to ro romanticize, you know, native primitive tribes or something, but uh, there are cultures that basically um, ever since childhood, they talk about their dreams. So um, by the time they are teenagers and adults, they can actually be more in um, control of their dreams and um, how they sort of dream at night because um, it's just a simple thing as thinking of or, or wishing for a dream before you fall asleep um, can make it so and in we, we lose this really fast because because we don't cultivate we don't uh, make any evolution to our dreamy dreaming life now uh, this was the beginning of this topic in this video and the sort of ideas I want to share and they have to do with change and um, the realization that we are pretty much in control of our change um, as long as there is no extreme force you know like poison from within or poison and violence outside mind precedes all mental states mind is their chief they are all mind wrought. If with an impure mind a person speaks or acts, suffering follows him like the wheel that follows the foot of the ox. And in the same way, the second verse in Dhammapada is the opposite. Mind precedes all mental states. Mind is their chief. They are all mind wrought. If with a pure mind a person speaks or acts, happiness follows him like his never departing shadow. This has to do with the term neuroplasticity, which is basically the brain's um, possibility of reorganizing itself or rewiring itself. And this is a very hopeful thing, also a destructive thing, you know, sometimes people you know, can say like, oh, I don't know what happened, you know, he or she just changed. But at the same time, it can be positive, it can be um, like seniors, uh, people, old people, who, um, who stay sort of vital and vibrant, because maybe at the age of 65, they began to show interest in building guitars, so they build guitars, or um, I don't know, they do something new and this rewires the brain, it makes it uh, fresh. Uh, like the Nobel Prize winner Bob Dylan said, he not busy being born, he's busy dying. Basically, um, stagnation and um, stagnation is death, you know, um, and there will be plenty of time of being dead, but you know, we can't be stagnated in our lives. So we can actually change our uh, mindset, what we project outside and how we feel within ourselves. Because I always find it fascinating when two people uh, go to the same place and one just think nothing happened, you know, it was boring. While the other one actually um, realized, you know, you have to sort of want something, you have to make something happen. There is something that is not promoted or explained or dwelt upon in, in, in media, in, in, in entertainment, in, in education, and thus not among, you know, parents, friends and all that. And that is your everyday happiness. You see, I'm so fascinated, fascinated about this because um, in my life now, every day is so it's like a bullet in the morning. It's like a bullet. It's just 
I mean, it doesn't be fast. I mean, you see nothing fast is going on right now, but every day is slightly different. And there's like a bullet of, of energy of, of, of wishes that just, you know, want to happen that day. And it doesn't matter if it's a rainy day and you just, you know, clean your kitchen or something or, or a day when you plan some event. And it all has to do with rewiring one's mind. As the quote from the Dhammapada, everything is a mental state. So if you take a year, as we enter the new cycle of year right now, after the winter solstice and the calendar, uh, calendrial, what do you say calendrial, new year? But anyway, you have 365, four days, you have 24 hours, a minute, you have so much time. And each time you pick up your phone to do something you already used to do, every time you, you, you do these small things inside your head, the thinking, uh, every time you're passive about something you wish to see results in, that will become a habit. If you go back to the concept of neuroplasticity or basically rewiring one's brain, we can change the way we eventually are. Our dreams are basically our lives. What's the difference? If you think about what happened in your life 15 years ago, the images you conjure up are dreamy and you change them actually. There's an interesting idea about memory. It's, it's also something that changes. There is no uh, permanent memory. So your memories from 15 years ago might seem dreamy, just like the dream you had last night. And if you take it for it is, if you take both of those as some reaction that happened in your brain, you know, the chemistry, the, the neurons firing and all that, they are equal. And in your dreams, you can be hurt. You know, if, if something hits you, you can, you can feel pain when this is applied to the to the real world sort of not only can your state of mind change of how you perceive or act in the world how you treat your people around you how you become um, but also this will change what you do in life as above so below what you change and perceive in your head will also be changing perceived in a different way outside of your head. This dragged on for a bit and the sun is already out. Beautiful December sun. So take care and all the best.